Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. In today's video, I am going to discuss the theory of production. So far in the subject of managerial economics, we have uh, discussed about the basics of managerial economics and then the theory of demand. So I have completed theory of demand. If you want, you can check all the previous videos. And now, today I, with this video, I will start the theory of production. Okay, so first we will start with the basics about the production. Uh, what is production? Well, production simply means it's the process of transforming the input into the output. Means we are putting together some few things such as raw materials and workforce that we call labor and other important things such as machinery and the use of other things such as uh, use of software or other automation, uh, machinery, all such things. So we also call those things, those inputs as the factors of production. So we use all of these inputs and by using some of the processes convert or transform that input into an output or a particular goods or commodity or services that is usable, that is usable by the common people. Okay, so that process is basically that process of transforming inputs into the output is known as production in economics. In this sub in this topic, we will discuss about various other things regarding the production. Now I was now, uh, as I was telling you about the factors of production, factors of production are uh, basically the economic concept in which we have categorized various inputs into mainly these four categories. Right. So, there are so many things. If we look around ourselves, there are so many things that we use in our daily life. Okay. And all of these have been made using so many different, different types of things. Again. But what we have done, we have categorized all those inputs or the things which we utilize to make a product into mainly four categories. This is purely from the perspective of economics that one is land, second one is labor, third is capital and the fourth is the enterprise. So we call these uh, factors of production. These are the major inputs or the category of inputs that we utilize in producing something. Land, labor, capital and enterprise. What is land? Land here does not simply mean the land. It includes so many other things as well. It can include land, building that we use for the office purpose, okay, and any other uh, uh, immovable kind of thing, okay. It also includes, uh, uh, you know, sometimes the state of the art, technology, as well as um, software, specialized software that uh, you are using in order to produce something, and machinery as well. Labor here means, it means the work are that the individual or the humans that we, that are putting into the process of production. Okay. So, it is the human capital basically. Then we have capital. Capital we refer with the help of money, but it includes uh, all kinds of uh, things, okay, that we purchase in order to facilitate the production and that is only possible when you have capital, which is of course actually finance or the money. Then we have the enterprise. Enterprise is something that uh, utilizes or organizes all of the first three factors of production. And this also includes entrepreneurs. In some of the books, we will find the fourth one as an entrepreneur and not as an enterprise. So here, the fourth one is the entrepreneur, the person who is taking this uh, a job or the task of setting up a legal entity or a business and then 
uh, organizing all of the factor inputs in order to produce something. Okay. However, entrepreneurship is, is a very broad concept and this is not uh, this coming within the purview of this topic. So, in short, all I can say is entrepreneur is one person who organizes and uses his efforts and ability and skill to organize all the factor inputs to convert the input into the output. So, that is where this is the fourth uh, factor of production. Now, the factors of input or the factors of production can also be divided into two various categories. One is fixed and one is variable. These two we will be using throughout this chapter. Fixed inputs are the inputs basically. These are the inputs which cannot be changed in a short period of time. If you have like zero, one month to six month time period in which you have to change or increase or decrease the supply of in the input factor. So, in this short period, the supply of the factor of production is inelastic. Okay. So, since it is inelastic, it is not elastic, you cannot change it. That is why those factor of production which is inelastic, which cannot be changed in short term period is called a fixed factor. And the otherwise the factors of production that can be changed even during the short period of even during the short term time, uh, they are elastic even during the short period of time. These factors are called as the variable factors. Generally, we will be finding that labor is considered to be as the variable factor. Henceforth, we will see that and land and capital we will keep as the fixed factor in short run period. What happens in the long run period? In the long run period, every factor is considered to be elastic. Means they all can be changed. The quantities of all of these input factors can be changed, decreased or increased. Then you have much time at your hand. So, in the long period of time, all the factors of production are considered as variable and there is no fixed factor of production. So, from this concept, we also arrive at these two types of production process that is short run production process and long run. So, uh, we, we of course divide the production function into two periods short run and the long run based on this condition of the availability of the uh, or the elasticity of the supply uh, elasticity in the supply of the factors of production. So this was all about the basics. Now coming to the next slide we have the measures of production. Before I start with the production process short run and the long run I would like you to uh, know some of the uh, concepts such as total product then average product and marginal product. It's very important to know these measures of productivity because it will be very helpful in understanding the short run and the long run production process. What is the total product? Total product is basically the maximum level of the output that can be produced with the given input. Okay. Then average product as the name itself suggests is the output produced per unit of input or mathematical expression is Q divided by L means output, Q is total output and L is your labor or you can say the variable input and as I have said in the short run we consider only one input as a variable and we consider labor to be variable means we can increase or decrease the units of the supply of labor even in the short term period. So, that is why we have simplified this, uh, uh, the concept of average product in terms of mathematical expression. In almost every book, you will see AP is equal to Q divided by L, means total output divided by the number of units, total output divided by the inputs. Okay. Then we have the third concept which is marginal. Marginal product, as you know, the concept of marginality I have already discussed. 
that it is a recurring again recurring theme uh, we will find marginal product marginal cost marginal productivity everywhere so marginal product is simply the change in the total output produced due to the change in the last or due to the last unit of input so we will see that there is increase there is an increase in the total output and if there was an increase in the labor or number of units of labor so we will simply try to find out how much is the increase in the total output and how much was the increase in the input corresponding with that increase in the output so that is basically the marginal product okay so mathematically we can simply find it out by using the formula delta q divided by delta l delta means change okay so the change in the total product you can take you the example in the later slide so from the succeeding number of output we minus the preceding one and we also find the change in the labor or the change in the output by doing this subtraction and then divide it and we get the marginal uh, product so here i have given two uh, mathematical expression one is delta l means labor and another is delta k k represents capital so where we are taking the capital also as a variable factor it happens in case of long run okay so there we can also find out the marginal product based on the change in the capital but generally we use this formula for finding out the marginal product so marginal product is the subsequent or the unit change in the uh, basically the change in the total product due to the unit change in the input now uh after having discussed about the measures of productivity that is total product average product and marginal product we move on to the next slide which is production function so as we have discussed demand function there will be production function cost function okay so what does it mean what does production function basically state it is actually it gives you the relationship technological relationship between the output and the input okay so how much of input i am utilizing and how much of output i am gaining okay then we express that in the mathematical you can say in a mathematical form that that formula or that equation is basically called the production function and this relationship in itself is a production function in production as i have said that we use so many things we use so many inputs but to make it simple okay or and make it precise and also to make it easily understandable for for the student the economists have done one thing that they have limited the uh, input to only two variable inputs one is labor another is capital so we will uh, be seeing generally i'm not using the cobb douglas production function here Uh, a general function here. I am using this uh, sorry Cobb Douglas production function here, which says Q that is the total output is the function of the number of units of inputs that is labor and capital in this case. So we are restricting our production function with uh, to these two inputs only, to these two factors of production only. and uh, the reason for this is also viable that we are not taking land here we are only l here is labor it's not land so land is more or less even it comes to the macro economic or aggregate level land remains same it is not going to change it is a um, not a man made thing so that is why it's always uh, there is a constant thing so that is why it has been taken away from the production function especially the empirical this is the empirical production function okay so that uh, is generally being utilized in, throughout the uh, topic to find out the uh, output input uh, ratio okay so this is the reason and this is what the production function basically tells here are certain assumptions so every theory 
in economics we know that every theory economics is followed by certain assumptions because these are social sciences theory and social sciences theory cannot be there without certain assumptions we make certain things constant if everything is changing then we may not be able to find the relationship between these two variables so in order to make the relationship workable between the two factors only we have to make other factors that are at play we have to make all other factors constant and these are called assumptions basically okay so first assumption is perfect perfect divisibility of both input and output so what we are saying here that we are not basically we are uh, taking the inputs and outputs into uh, into uh, you know point or decimal point numbers we are taking them in ones and twos you know so here we are assuming that these are equal and distribute equally divisible second one is the only factors of production that we are taking here are land labor and capital i have already explained why we are we are taking only these two inputs in the empirical production function because land we consider as the constant thing and entrepreneur again is not uh, going to uh, it does not affect the production directly because it is not that kind of input which is converted into the output the effort of an entrepreneur or owner it does not get converted into the um, actual physical product directly but we can see the capital and labor being converted into the uh, directly it has uh, it, it directly gets converted into the um, product then third one is limited substitution of one factor for the other so what we do we limit the substitution we, you cannot say that, okay capital is uh, costly so don't use this you keep on increasing the labor so you can have more more production no it is not like that there is limited substitute substitution between these two means you simply can, it, it is not viable to increase your production to after a certain point just by increasing any one of these so or uh, the other uh, other way i can say that you can say that okay you do not have labor so do not increase it keep on increasing the capital and the things that you can purchase with the capital and your production will shoot up no it does not it cannot why because see uh, raw material you purchase with the help of the capital okay you have enough of a raw material to produce extra or so excessive amount of uh, output but how can you convert all of those raw material without the use of the substantial amount of the labor so if you are increasing raw material in order to produce more of a good let's say 10 or 10 cells so after certain amount of time you have to need or uh, use extra labor as well because they are the ones who will be you know running the errand the machine the other thing so just uh, to say that one of the input is a perfect substitute of the other no it cannot be substituted after certain amount of time means labor has its own value capital will have its own value technology the state of technology is uh, constant and it's not changing here we consider that because when we change there is a whole shift in the technology then of course you will find the greater amount of output it happens that some time what happens when there is a total shift from labor intensive to capital intensive or technology intensive uh, production process there will be surge in the production and the output will be too high so in that case this production function that particular production function will not hold because suddenly you will see increase in the total output without increasing or changing in the labor or um, uh, proportionate change in these two so we are taking uh, assuming that the technology is constant for a particular period of time in elastic supply of fixed factors in the short run again that i have already discussed this that when we are considering the production function in a short run we'll see that 
all of the factors of production cannot uh, be changed or they are not elastic so the supply of some of the factors of production is in elastic supply of some of the factors of production is in elastic and they are called as fixed factor okay and it happens in the short run what happens in the long run in the long run in the long run the supply of all the factors are elastic means it can be changed or modified so none of the factors are fixed they are all called variable yes proportionality there will be proportional difference between the two variables anyhow so this is these are five important assumptions that holds the production function uh, theory which states the technology relationship between the output and the input so with this uh, i hope the basics of the production theory is clear and in the next video i will start with the production function in the short term thank you